Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeToon.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Well, hang on, I got a coffee, a combination of things to celebrate the recent great North American total solar eclipse that went through Northeast Ohio. Hang on one minute. Hmm. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. We kick it off with uh, Tim Hortons. Yeah, this is uh, their original blend ground coffee. Canada's favorite coffee. We're using Tim Hortons because the eclipse went right through Canada as it did Northeast Ohio. And we're also using our Been There uh, State of Ohio coffee mug. This came from viewer Beth Jones, who resides there in Temple, Texas and the eclipse went right through Temple, Texas. That's why we're using the mug from Beth Jones and it celebrates the state of Ohio and the eclipse went right through the state of Ohio, right through Northeast Ohio. It was a really, really awesome, awesome event. We're gonna be telling you all about that later on in the show. We have some pictures to show and, and just a, it was an incredible experience. Uh, if you ever get a chance to experience a total solar eclipse, by all means, do so. I mean, it was really, really an amazing, amazing event. So we'll tell you all about that later on in the show. Hey, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. As we like to say in the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Absolutely. Hang on one more sip. Hmm. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Hey, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate that. If you're listening to the podcast this morning, thanks for tuning us in. Really, really do appreciate that. Boy, we've got a great show for you this morning. But before we get to some of those details regarding what's on the show, I want to show you this because in a previous show, uh, I talked about a bird hitting my window over here. Right over there was hitting my window. And I asked viewers if they knew of any solutions out there. Jimmy V Photography recommended these, the Wall Plus decals right here. Yeah, these are terrific. These worked. Uh, and he wrote me and said, here's a link to the decals I put on my sliding glass doors. These work great. Since I put them on, there hasn't been one bird hit. Have a great one, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, thank you very, very much. I put them on the window over here. No more bird strikes. Yeah, these really, really do work. So if you're experiencing the same kind of situation, check these out. We will have the link below. These are the Wall Plus 12 Pieces Large Size Hummingbird Window Clings, Anti-Collision Window Clings Decals to Prevent Bird Strikes on Window Glass. Uh, and yeah, these work really, really well. They give you 12 of them for about five bucks, something like that. And uh, you can see right here is a neat looking hummingbird and a flower there. And uh, they just peel off very, very easily. They're self-adhesive. Uh, so they kind of just adhere to the window and you can pull them off and reposition them and move them around however you want to do it. Yeah, so these work really, really well. So my thanks to Jimmy V for recommending these. So if you have a need uh, for something like this, we'll link it below in case you're getting uh, some bird strikes and that sort of thing. So yeah, these, these work really, really well. So my thanks to Jimmy V. Really, really do appreciate that, Jimmy. Thanks again very, very much. How are you this morning? Great to be with you. We've got a great show for you. Let me look at our agenda here, our topics. we got a great shaving tip for you this morning. We've got a shaved end visit of sorts. Uh, we have got uh, some updates on uh, meetups and that sort of thing. We're going to give you a review and a follow-up on that great North American total solar eclipse. Again, got some great photos. A couple of folks sent in photos that they snapped of this eclipse. Really, really amazing. Got some great refill comments. New wet shave gear. Boy, we got some great stuff in new wet shave gear. Wait till you see that. Some, some new shaving soaps to talk about. And we also have some great questions and comments. So thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in this morning. Again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. So thanks very, very much for tuning in. Really, really do appreciate it. Great to be with you this morning. And let's kick off the show like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Trevor Steele, and he writes, Morning, Mark, further to the tip from Robert Ross. Now, this is in regards to uh, Robert Ross's cleaning tip 
uh, how to clean your razors. Uh, and Robert said that when he cleans his razor, his three-piece curve aluminum razor, he'll take it apart uh, and he'll clean, clean it with a micro cloth, but then he'll also follow up with a Q-tip because it gets into some of those tight areas. Well, uh, Trevor here says, I have a further tip. I place my cleaned and dried razors in a box or drawer and toss in a few silicon gel packs. Yes, the ones most people just throw away. They come with so many products. Not only does it take all the moisture away, it also stops the metal finish from tarnishing if you keep it in a box for a long time. Great show as usual, Trevor Steele. Wow, that's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic shaving tip, Trevor. Thank you very, very much. And this is something that everybody has in their household. I mean, uh, they come in pill pill bottles and all kinds of other products, uh, you know, those little silicon gel packs to absorb moisture. Yeah, get a couple of those, throw them in with your razors, uh, and it'll take away all that excess moisture. That is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic tip, Trevor. Thanks so much for sending it along. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the Monday Morning Mailbag shaving tip segment of the Monday Morning Mailbag, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Trevor, thanks very, very much for a really creative, practical, useful shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Well, we have a shave den visit of sorts from Jim from Northfield. He has some new acquisitions to his shave den. And he writes, hey, Mark, I cannot recall if I sent these photos of an eBay find that I acquired two months ago. These new additions to my shave den include a Gillette Fat Boy, a Lady Gillette Super Speed, a vintage Vespoc dry shaver with full blade pack, and the prize, other than the Fat Boy, is a 1915 original aristocrat. This razor is very rare, worth much, and is like a Gillette single ring, but has the flute style barrel. Best of all, I only paid $34 total price for the entire lot. As always, right time and right place. Thanks. Jim. Wow, Jim, congratulations on a really spectacular wet shaving gear find. That is absolutely amazing. Again, folks, it just goes to show that if you do your homework, you have a little, you have a little bit of patience, uh, and you know what you're looking at, you could find something really, really amazing. Now, that 1915 original aristocrat, uh, I would not have known that. And I'm afraid that if I came across that, I probably would have passed on it. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. The Vespoc dry shaver, first time I've ever heard of that, to be perfectly honest with you, Jim. Thanks so much for sending that one along. If anybody has additional information on that, please email me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com or comment below. I'd like to have a further discussion regarding that one. That is really a neat find as well. And again, the Lady Gillette and a great looking Gillette fat boy. Wow, congratulations. Again, folks, a little bit of patience, do your homework, know what to look for. You know, always keep a lookout for uh, these kinds of deals that are out there on eBay, uh, thrift stores, antique shops, mom and pop pharmacies and drugstores that we talked about in the past. Uh, and you never know what you'll come across, but you have to know what it is that you're looking at. And, and you know, that's the key. And Jim, spotted a 1915 original aristocrat. That is absolutely amazing. Congratulations, Jim. Really, really wonderful find. And thanks so much for sending in the photos and sharing with all the viewers out there. Really, really terrific, Jim. Thanks again. Well, we want to remind you of a great meetup that is happening this Saturday, April 20th in Adrian, Michigan. It's the Maggard Meetup again in Adrian, Michigan, it is taking place at uh, 124 South Winter Street, Adrian, Michigan, 49221 from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. 
Uh, we'll get the link for you so you can get tickets. They're $35 each. And listen to all the confirmed vendors as of April 4th that are going to be attending. Ariana and Evans, Barrister and Mann, Captain's Choice, Katie's Bubbles, Chiseled Face, Eleven, Henson Shaving, House of Mammoth, Carve Razors, Rex Supply Company, Shannon Soaps, Sterling Soap Company, Southern Witchcrafts, Dogwood Handcrafts, Sudsy Soapery, Through the Fire Fine Crafts, Arm and Blades, Timeless Razor, Holy Call, Wolf Whiskers, and Zingari Man. Wow, what a lineup. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic meetup. Again, it's this Saturday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. in Adrian, Michigan. Tickets are $35. They still have tickets available at the time I'm recording this. So make sure you get up there, get your ticket, and I hope to see you there at the Maggard Meetup this Saturday, April 20th from 12 until 5. Absolutely fantastic. And also, uh, a reminder that the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup have set the date for their meetup, so save the date, Saturday, September 14th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Rivers Edge Cutlery, 4601 Lyman Drive, Hilliard, Ohio, 43026. Again, save the date, for the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup, Saturday, September 14th, 2024. So now you're up to date with Wet Shaving Meetups. Here's your, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and now, right here on YouTube. Well, this past week was the great North American total solar eclipse came right over the Northeast Ohio, right through Geauga County. It was really, really amazing. And uh, wow, I got some pictures here and a couple of other photos from viewers out there who sent them along and I shot some video. I just wanted to show you uh, what the experience was like. It was really amazing. If you ever get a chance to uh, witness and view a total solar eclipse, by all means, do so. It was really, really amazing. Uh, here's a, a photo I took from uh, my neighbor's driveway. I went over to see uh, the Chobbies, Mike, Jennifer, and their son, uh, Matthew. And uh, we were kind of experiencing it together. And this is a quick photo I took of the sun just as the eclipse was starting. Now, I didn't have any uh, proper uh, photo settings or anything like that. I just held my, my camera phone uh, up real quickly and just snap this. Still a really neat, remarkable photo of the sun as the eclipse started. So I, I was really impressed by that. And again, um, I didn't actually get the eclipse, but I did get this really, what I consider to be a pretty neat photo with that dark rainbow ring around the around the sun. As you can see, we had some high wispy clouds, but the, uh, the eclipse was still uh, viewable. And we did see Venus uh, close to the sun there, uh, which was really, really neat. Uh, that was really, really terrific. Now, uh, when the eclipse was starting, the shadows got really, really precise. Shadows were not blurry at all. Here's a picture of, uh, of, of my shadow uh, on the driveway there, and I'm holding my hand up to try to uh, create a pinhole so I could project the uh, eclipse uh, in that area there. And you could probably, if you were to zoom in, you could probably see it just a little bit. But this is just an example of how, uh, how precise and how defined the shadows uh, became. <laughs> really, really neat. Now, everything started to, to, to dim as, as the eclipse was proceeding. It's like somebody was turning on a dimmer switch and everything just started to dim. <laughs> and it was getting darker and darker and darker until... Well, everything, everything went dark and the streetlights came on and uh, it was really, really amazing. And there was this, this 360 degree sunset. You could look all the way around the horizon from right to left and you had this sunset 
that was 360 degrees. That was really, really neat. It also got cooler. I mean, <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, it was just fantastic. And here's the thing. Uh, my other neighbors, ben and, ben and Rebecca Moralia on the corner, they were saying that Chardon Square, two miles up the road, was just packed with people. And when the eclipse went into totality, uh, everybody cheered. And you can hear that cheer <laughs> from two miles away. That was really, really neat. Let me show you uh, a photo here of the total eclipse. This came from Jim from Northfield. His sister, Lori, took this photo. A really, really fantastic photo. Lori, thank you very, very much uh, for this photo. And you can see at about the seven o'clock position there, uh, what appears to be a little bit of a solar flare. Take note of that. That is that was really really something amazing, and we could you could take off your glasses and then look at this right here with the naked eye without worrying about any harm uh, to your eyes. But as soon as it as soon as the eclipse, you know, the moon moved out of the way, you had to put your you had to put your glasses back on, uh, you know, because those sun rays were coming coming through pretty powerful. Uh, here is a, another eclipse photo that came from uh, fellow wet shaver Josh Perkins. Now you can see that little bit of a solar flare there at the seven o'clock position, a little more clearly in this photo. Uh, my brother Jim's an amateur astronomer. He tells me this is known as Bailey's Beads. That's what that flare at the bottom of the sun is. This is sunlight breaking through the moon's mountain ranges. That's the way he explained it to me. <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, a really, really spectacular, spectacular show. And the neat thing is, is that as the, uh, as the, uh, the eclipse started to end, uh, the light that came, you know, the dimmer switch coming back up, the light coming back up, it was a white light. I mean, it was really amazing. It was, it was, like, it was, a, it was like a pure white light. And that in itself was really, really something I've, I've never experienced that. That was really amazing. It's just like a white, white light. And then all of the, um, uh, you know, the, the street lights and everything were, were, were turning off again because, the, you know, the eclipse was, was completing. And it was really, really an amazing, amazing experience. And, uh, and again, just the, uh, uh, the coolness, the kind of dimmer switch sensation, the white light as it was finishing up, the really, really crisp, hard edge shadows, uh, seeing Venus like that, that, that Bailey's beads, that solar flare to, of, of, of sorts, uh, and just seeing the totality in the ring and everything was really, really amazing. Just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic event. And I'm so glad that I witnessed it. It was really, really amazing. So again, if you ever have a chance to take in a total solar eclipse, by all means, do so. I think the next one is 2026 in Spain, I think. I think they're going to have an annular eclipse uh, in uh, South America, in southern Argentina and southern Chile. So if you happen to have any of those uh, you know, solar glasses, solar eclipse glasses that you use, uh, there are a couple of organizations that are gathering those up. Don't throw them away. Send them to those organizations, and they're going to send them down to schools in South America so the kids there will have uh, those glasses to use for the annular solar eclipse that's coming up in October, October 2nd of this year, I believe. So uh, that's also something to think about. We'll have the link below where you can send those glasses if you have a whole bunch left over, that sort of thing. A really, really great idea. That was passed on uh, by uh, Douglas Smythe. Thank you very much for that, Douglas. Really do appreciate it. So yeah, it was an absolutely fantastic, fantastic event. My thanks to everybody who sent along images. Thanks to Josh and Lori for sending those images. Absolutely fantastic. And my thanks to my neighbors, the Chobbies and also the Moralias uh, for, uh, you know, allowing me to, <laughs> allowing me to share the experience with all of them. It was really, really fantastic. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. Mm. Yeah, we're having our eclipse coffee, our post-eclipse coffee. Thanks again to Beth Jones for a really, really delightful uh, coffee mug. Been there coffee mug uh, celebrating the state of Ohio. We'll have a link on Amazon where you can get 
these been there coffee mugs from Starbucks. They really, really are terrific. They make a great gift or a gift for yourself uh, when you're enjoying a cup of coffee in your home state. These are absolutely fantastic. Again, my thanks to uh, Beth Jones, and we're, a joint, we're enjoying um, Tim Horton's uh, Canada's Favorite Coffee. So that ties in uh, all the places uh, regarding the eclipse. It was The eclipse was in Canada, it was in Ohio, and it was also in Beth's hometown there in Texas. So uh, my thanks again to Beth, and um, my thanks to Tim Hortons for a really good coffee too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, again, we've got a great show for you this morning. We've got some great comments and refill. Let's get right to them. Uh, Al Spencer writes, I got 10 months out of a tube 2.0. I find it to be less mess, less fuss. Yeah, this is the cube 2.0 in a tube form. Now, this is a new one right here. And, of course, the, uh, the material the actual product is right in there like that. And it's like an antiperspirant uh, dispenser. You just uh, screw the bottom of it and it uh, pushes that cube 2.0 uh, upwards. And you can you know, move that across your face like that and work it up into a lather. And yeah, that's a fantastic, fantastic, uh, fantastic, fantastic product uh, that has the cube 2.0 in tube uh, form, which is why they call it the tube 2.0. Uh, great for travel as well. And uh, 10 months... From a tube 2.0, according to Al. Al, thanks very much for that. Really do appreciate that. Because we had a discussion as to how long the cube 2.0 lasts. And Mike H. told us that he's getting 10 months out of a cube 2.0. And Al is getting 10 months out of a tube 2.0. Uh, 10 fluid ounces, 30 minutes, writes, uh, about the how long does cube 2.0 last. Be aware the product starts at 8 ounces I have not worked with it, but makes me curious. It may be for only pre-washing, so not much should be needed for any single use. Therefore, the cube should last a very long time. I agree. It should last a very, very long time. Of course, when I use it, I use it for a pre-shave and also pre-shave lather. So I'm using it, uh, I'm giving it two uses for my shaves. But yeah, it, <laughs> it lasts a long time. When I crack open a new cube, I'm going to have to mark a calendar and then uh, go from there and kind of mark off somehow uh, how often I'm using it. I use it for every shave, but there are going to be some times where maybe I won't use it because I'm uh, reviewing a new shave soap and want to just show the performance of the shave soap by itself without a pre-shave. So, uh, you know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, uh, generally speaking, uh, I use it for every shave. Um, but yeah, it's a great product. I really do like it a lot. Viewer JTNF9TK, uh, he has a comment here, and I wish YouTube would go back to real names. <laughs> so my apologies to uh, JT uh, for not getting your real name here, but an absolutely fantastic comment. Uh, and uh, JT writes, Hi, Mark. As always, it's another great 3MB. I just want to affirm Mark Bagwell's review on the Sharp Shaver Shave Bowl. It does indeed make a great lather. I recommend it to new and veteran wet shavers alike. One more thing, you can have your bowl in a two-tone color scheme. My bowl is black and red. Just know that this bowl is a great addition to anyone's den. Philip Sharp, the owner, was easy to talk to about my order. He made some suggestions before I made my decision. He is a no-pressure individual. I will do business with him again. Take care. Well, JT, thanks again for uh, confirming uh, Mark Bagwell's review on how great the uh, Sharp Shaver Shave Bowl is. It really is terrific. It's 3D printed. I happen to have one here that Philip very kindly sent to the channel. And yeah, <laughs> it really does make a lot of great lather. And it's a really nice size. Not too large, not too small. Makes heaps of lather and uh, plenty of room to hold it in there. Absolutely. So, JT, thanks very much for confirming that. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Jim from Northfield wrote, Hey, Mark, the eclipse was figuratively a once-in-a-lifetime event. It was fantastic. I saw it at a rest stop in Vermilion, Ohio, a prime spot. As for that Gillette Brush Plus kit, I have a new old stock complete with Atra Razor Brush liquid soap cartridge, and two extra blades. I never use it as I wish to keep it in untouched condition. 
I know occasionally eBay will sell the refill cartridges. Not sure if it will still stand the test of time. Thanks, as always, for the 3MB. Jim from Northfield. Wow, Jim. <laughs> You've got one of those Gillette brushes that we talked about in last week's Monday Morning Mailbag. That's absolutely fantastic. And yeah, it's yeah. you wonder with a brush being that old if it'll hold up. That's a very, very good question. But uh, yeah, a very good idea to kind of keep yours as a museum piece of sort. Really, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Beth Jones wrote... Uh, hi, Mark. Thank you for another wonderful and informative 3MB. By the way, I tried both the MyBlades Platinum and Silver. I found them both to be very sharp, smooth, and efficient. Yeah, those are great blades. Wally Pankowski uh, sent some of those blades to the channel. We've reviewed them. They are absolutely fantastic. We'll have a link below where you can check those out. Beth, thanks very much for confirming how wonderful those blades are. Uh, she continues here. Have a great rest of the week. Total eclipse here in Temple, Texas today. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it awesome, Beth? It was absolutely awesome here in Ohio. Of course, we talked about it just, just previously in the show. It was really a once-in-a-lifetime event, as Jim uh, mentioned, uh, Jim from Northfield mentioned. It was just absolutely fantastic, really, really great. And I hope you had a great event. Uh, I hope you had a great viewing of the eclipse there in Temple, Texas. Hey, viewer Bill Murphy wrote, great show, Mark. Looking forward to the eclipse today. Bill, I hope you had clear skies for the eclipse. Absolutely. We will be in the 94% coverage in the Chicago area. The weather is clear and should be a good show. Hope you have your eclipse glasses. All the soaps you talked about sound great. In the last few weeks, I received a timeless aluminum slant and a timeless titanium razor. Wow, absolutely fantastic. They both shave mild and great. Looking forward to the meetup. Have a great week. Hey, Bill, looking forward to seeing you at the meetup. And you'll also be able to talk to the guys from Timeless Razor at the meetup as well. Uh, and yeah, they make an absolutely fantastic, fantastic razor. Folks, we will link Timeless Razor below. And if you are at, uh, if you're attending the Maggard meetup, make sure to visit uh, the guys from Timeless Razor. They really do make a fantastic razor. Absolutely. Uh, Neil, 5481 wrote, I have been fortunate in my life to have seen two solar eclipses, but must admit, being laid back Aussies, we just took it in our stride, except for pro and amateur stargazers who got excited. But watching Americans get so excited is more amazing to me than the eclipse. <laughs> Love your show and enthusiasm. Keep well, Neil L. Hey, Neil, thanks very much. Wonderful that you're checking in from down under. Yeah, we were all really, really excited uh, for the eclipses here. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, you know what? Coincidentally, my brother Jim saw the two eclipses. He saw the 2017 total eclipse in uh, western Kentucky. He traveled down for that. And then again, right here in our own backyard this past week. And uh, yeah, it was pretty It was. Pretty amazing. Yeah, we got really excited and with good reason. As I say, uh, the, the, the big thing for me was when it went into totality, I could hear cheers from two miles away from the town square. That was amazing as well. So, Neil, thanks very much for checking in from all the way from down under from, uh, from Australia. Thanks so much. Uh, Cheryl Lopez, 4152, wrote, Awesome to everyone that is experiencing the eclipse. Unfortunately, I'm one of many that won't be able to. Mark, hopefully you could do some, so, uh, some, some sort of video when you are experiencing the event. Happy Eclipse Day, everyone. Wishing everyone clear skies, cool vibes, and a safe day. Yeah, Cheryl, it was absolutely fantastic. And I didn't do any live streaming or anything like that because I wasn't sure how my phone was going to photograph things, as you saw with the uh, first photo. Uh, that's when the eclipse was just starting, and I didn't really get the eclipse, but I got a neat neat photo of the sun. And there was also some talk of uh, being careful of, of, of using your camera, uh, pointing it at the eclipse, because it could actually burn out uh, some of the photosensitivity equipment on your, on your camera phone, uh, the photo cells. That's what I heard. I don't know how true that was, but I wasn't going to take any chance. That's why when I took that photo of the sun... I just uh, picked my photo, my, my phone up and click and then went back down and, uh, you know, kept wearing the glasses and that sort of thing. 
uh, you know, protection, protection, protection during this uh, during this event. But it was really, really amazing, and the glasses worked really well. And uh, yeah, we had uh, we had we had some nice weather. It would have been it would have been better if the high wispy clouds didn't come into play, but they were there. But still, kind of gave a kind of a neat uh, neat effect of the uh, of the total eclipse. It was really really terrific. So again. Cheryl, if uh, if you ever have a chance to see one of these, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> travel to the destination. It was really, really awesome. Oh, Cheryl continues here. Getting together with others is what helps make these events magical as well. I uh, hope you had a wonderful time. Yeah, I did have a wonderful time. And yeah, it was nice seeing the neighbors. It really was. Most of the neighborhood, I think, was up on the square. <laughs> To be honest with you, I didn't see a lot of people out in their front yards like we were. I think everybody was up at the square uh, with the crowds. Uh, and it was really, really neat. And again, that 360-degree sunset, that was amazing as well. So thanks again, Cheryl. It was really, really a terrific time. Uh, Will Kendall wrote, I love that brush. I have it myself, and it's still going strong after a year of use. He's remarking about the atomic rocket that I did with the, uh, I used for the cube only shave, as long as we're talking about the cube. Uh, he happened to see that video, that's from a few years ago, where I used nothing but the cube 2.0 for a shave, and it did a really good job. But key to that was the Atomic Rocket Shaving Brush, an absolutely fantastic, fantastic shaving brush. One of the, one of the first shaving brushes that I got from Phoenix Shaving, I love that brush as well. And you're absolutely right, Will, it really is a fantastic brush, and it's still going strong. Uh, I think I've had mine for a longer, mine longer than a year, probably a two, three years, something like that. It's an absolutely fantastic brush. I like it so much so that I think I might buy another one just to kind of have, <laughs> just to kind of have just in case. That's how good the brush is. Love the handle on it. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic brush. I agree. Uh, Makula writes, it's very impressive how these artisans are able to improve organic vegan soaps each year. I remember a time where if you wanted to go the vegan route, it was common knowledge you were giving up performance, but not anymore. They are masters of their craft. I have the utmost respect for their dedication. Uh, you know what, Makula, a really, really good point. This is in regards to a review we did of American Vintage Soap Company's Alpha Shave Soap and All Natural Vegan Shave Soap. And of course, Phoenix Shaving, CK6, is vegan as well. It's certainly not tallow. And yeah, it's amazing how, how far uh, the quality of these artisan shave soaps uh, have progressed. Really, really amazing. Uh, so really, if you get a chance, check out Sterling, check out Hendrix Classics and Company, check out Phoenix Shaving, check out American Vintage Soap Company, check out, I mean, there's so many others out there, uh, Sudsy Soapery and uh, Mama Bear Soaps and uh, a lot of great soap makers out there that provide a really good quality artisan soap, uh, both vegan and tallow. Tallow and non-tallow. Really amazing. And I agree with you, Makula. It's very impressive how far these artisans have come with the quality of soaps that they are offering. Really, really amazing. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, Ricker 76 er wrote, Good morning, Mark and George. Watching the show in the car this morning before the job site opens and enjoying my gas station coffee. I'm in Louisville. Only 99% eclipse coverage here. I was planning on taking the day off and heading to Indiana today to see the totality, but weather predictions are cloudy. Luckily for me, I got to see totality in 2017 near Bowling Green, Kentucky. If you can, I implore to see it. It is amazing in capital letters. Anyway, anyway, happy shaving. Yeah, it was amazing. And you saw the 2017 total eclipse that my brother also saw. He was in Western Kentucky. I think he might have been near Bowling Green as well. And he said it was absolutely amazing. A lot of people there had traveled to that area of the country to see it. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. So thanks very much for that, Ricker 76er. Uh, Wayne Gottke wrote, two days worth of beard growth? Mark, you get that beard off, sir. <laughs> I was scared that you had just joined a motorcycle gang or something. Ha, 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 ha. Just kidding. Awesome video as always. This is in regards to one of my reviews where I had 
two days worth of beard growth. And yeah, um, I'm, I have not shaved uh, yet. I'm going to shave either after the show or tomorrow. And uh, a new shave soap is going to be part of that shave. We'll talk about that more in new wet shave gear, introducing a new shave soap to you from Hendrix Classics and Company. Uh, Pete very, very kindly sent it along to the channel. We'll talk about it more, new wet shaving gear, so stay tuned. But yeah, uh, Wayne, <laughs> yeah, two days worth of beard growth for me. Yeah, I am so happy to shave it off. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for the very, very kind and humorous comment. Really do appreciate it. This comes from user FZ2XZ2YO4E. Again, I, I'm, I apologize. Oh, David Dart. There it is. He's got it in the body of the letter. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. this is really, really nice of him to send this along. Good morning, Mark. Uh, George is in Canada. He currently resides in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Your friend, David Dart. David, thank you so much because we were talking about asking the question, where is George? I've sent out uh, these sketches uh, that are associated with sending in a shave tip, and I sent back a George sketch. I know they're in Germany. They're in England, uh, America, uh, now Canada. Yeah, uh, David Dart has George in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Keith Osmond said, and St. John's, uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada, NL. That's what that is, Newfoundland, Labrador, I think. Uh, my apologies if I got that wrong, but St. John's, Canada. Uh, thanks very much for that, Keith. And Paul DeJardin said, uh, and Montreal. So there you go. <laughs> George is in Canada, in Toronto, Montreal, and St. John's. Gentlemen, Thank you very, very much. I'm very, very flattered by that. That's absolutely fantastic. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, we teased it in the show earlier, and here it is, brand new, just launched from Hendrix Classics and Company, Big City Nights. How about that? This is available at Pasteur's in New York City. Check out their website. This is where you can get this. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic scent. This is an homage to Scuderia Ferrari Black Shine. Oh, this is really, really wonderful. Uh, and here's what they have to say about it. The adage, if you can make it in NYC, you can make it anywhere, epitomizes the boundless possibilities and relentless hustle that New York City embodies. It's a place where dreams are not just dreamt, but are chased with a fervor that matches the city's never sleeping streets. Consider the guy who's now cruising down Fifth Avenue in his Ferrari, a beacon of success and a testament to making it big time in the city's unforgiving landscape. Big City Nights was made to tip the hat to all those who can relate to the uncompromising underdog that embodies the bold and relentless spirit to overcome whatever circumstances and challenges life may throw at them in their pursuit to prove that winners win and success is not merely about reaching a destination, but about the courage to pursue it. Crafted with a sophisticated blend of scent notes, including lavender, blood orange, Amalfi lemon, watermelon, Granny Smith apple, thyme, vanilla, amber, leather, musk, and Virginia cedar, Scuderia Ferrari Black Shine is a bold and invigorating experience. Whether you're cruising down Fifth Avenue or navigating the quiet streets of a small town with nothing but your good name, your belief in yourself, and your dreams, this fragrance is the perfect companion for those who embody the courageous spirit of those who shoot for the moon in the pursuit of their dreams. We present to you Big City Nights. Yeah, this is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic scent. We're going to get a review done on this. This is... This is wonderful. It is bold. It is refined. It is masculine. It is gentlemanly. It definitely is top shelf. 
and it does have that big city vibe pulsating through the scent. Really, really terrific. The description that Rich Hansen and Pete sent to the channel is absolutely spot on. My gosh, this is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful scent. And it's Hendrix Classics and Company's wonderful soap base. So it's going to make heaps and heaps of lather. Uh, they also have an aftershave available. And check out that art. Metallic label again that just pops when you work it under the light. It is absolutely marvelous. It's going to look great in your shave den because of these metallic labels. And again, we're going to have about two days worth of growth. Maybe we'll probably do this review tomorrow, I'm thinking. Maybe after the show, maybe tomorrow. Going to Probably tomorrow with two days worth of beard growth because the soap base is just so wonderful and provides a lot of coverage, makes heaps of lather. But an absolutely fantastic, fantastic scent available at Pasteur's in New York City. So get up to their website. You'll see it there. It just launched. We're going to get a review done on this. Really looking forward to this one again. Oh, man, that is wonderful. Big City Nights, bold, masculine, gentlemanly, really captures the, uh, the pulsating vibration of New York City and any big city that you may be familiar with. Really, really a terrific, terrific scent. So check it out. Available at Pasteur's, just launched from Hendrix Classics and Company. Big City Nights, my thanks to Pete Hendricks and everyone at Hendricks Classics and Company for sending this one along to the channel and allowing me to share it with all the viewers. Thanks again, Pete. Really do appreciate it. Well, here's a just released shave soap from Phoenix Shaving. We just did the review this past Friday. We also reviewed it in the advent calendar this past Christmas. Here it is, Rabbit Fighter from Phoenix Shaving. Boy, oh boy, is this a great scent. Uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Here's the scent profile. Vetiver Haiti, Cypress, Pacholi, Tonka Bean, Musk, and a Kiss of Ozone. It's spicy, musky metallic, camphorous, herbaceous, green and glittery, woody, earthy, and brash. Now, the earthiness is not like a dirt, organic earthiness. It's more of a fresh, as they say here, herbaceous green and glittery kind of earthy kind of scent. Really, really terrific. But the thing that sells it for me is that kiss of ozone. That really evokes the, 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 the scent uh, and the sensation after, after a, a, a spring or summer shower, uh, after a rain shower. You get that, that freshness, that kind of, gosh, that kind of uh, just a, a really fresh vibe. There's something in the air that's a little different. That's what Rabbit Fighter has. It's that kiss of ozone in there that really sells it for me. Really, really like this a lot. Check out the review. It ran this past Friday. And of course, it's Formula CK6. So you know it's going to make heaps and heaps of lather. And the, uh, the aftershave is absolutely fantastic. Both of these pair up so wonderfully well. So if you're going to get Rabbit Fighter, check out the bundle. It really is terrific. An absolutely fantastic, fantastic scent. Perfectly described here. Spicy, musky, metallic, camphorous, herbaceous, green and glittery, woody, earthy, and brash. Now, the brashness in its own way and the spicy part of it, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not, I really don't get a spiciness uh, as I do in some other soaps that have a spiciness. It's probably perhaps in the background a little bit. But again, uh, through repeated use, it'll probably evolve and come forward a little bit for me. You know, sometimes when you use shave soaps, uh, you discover a, a, a new level of the scent. Uh, and you think, wow, I never really picked up on that before. And I think that's what's going to happen with uh, Rabbit Fighter. But really, the thing that really sells it for me is that kiss of ozone. That is really, really great. I get the herbaceous, green and glittery, earthy part of the scent. It's brashness in its own way. I get that. But that kiss of ozone, really, that's a really kind of unique freshness. I really like that a lot. So check it out. Rabbit Fighter from Phoenix Shaving will have links below. My thanks to Doug, Fran, Huxley, and everyone at Phoenix Shaving for very kindly sending this one along to the channel and allowing me to share it with all the viewers. Thanks again, Doug, Fran, Huxley, and everyone at Phoenix Shaving. Well, we have a follow-up 
on a shave soap that we recently reviewed and also discussed on the Monday Morning Mailbag, uh, the American Vintage Soap Company's The Final Shaving Soap Alpha. Yeah, we reviewed this. This was absolutely wonderful. And uh, Robert, the owner of uh, American Vintage Soap Company, sent along these comments. Just wanted to add some things. The black jar tubs on the Etsy site have added olive oil, which results in a slightly different lather and post-shave feel, and are also bigger at 8 ounces instead of 6, like the final shave soap. Uh, the goal with the final shave soap was to make it as minimalist as possible, all natural, great lather, and slickness, and easy maintenance, razor clog, sink clog, etc. This final recipe just seemed like the most balanced in those regards and was the most upvoted internally among friends and family across all the iterations. Some versions were thicker lather, some were slicker with less overall lather, some were light and rinsed off easier. The final recipe just seemed to balance the most of those. Anyways, thank you again for your kind words. Hope to do this again soon with another scent. Yeah, I look forward to that, please. Yeah, absolutely. This was a great all-natural shaving soap. Also had a wonderful, wonderful scent. We like the, uh, the cinnamon scent with the uh, lemon and eucalyptus in the background. Really, really nice. Had a nice warm vibe going to it. And yeah, it made a wonderful, wonderful lather. And I also commented that uh, in certain instances uh, of that lather on the face, it faded a little bit, but there was a really nice slickness there. So I can understand his comments about balancing out uh, the amount of lather and the slickness, and trying to get the best of both worlds. And I think they succeeded with it. It really, really was a terrific, terrific uh, lathering, all natural shave soap. Made a really nice lather, provided a lot of nice slickness, and also responded well when I used it in my scuttle. So uh, a warm scuttle, uh, it, it, gave, it gave nice performance in a warm scuttle as well, is what I'm saying. So yeah, this was really, really terrific. American Vintage Soap Company, the final shaving soap, we reviewed their Alpha, and they also have some other scents up there. We'll link them below, both at their website, uh, the American Vintage Soap Company website, and also their Etsy storefront. You can check out all their offerings up there. So Robert, thanks again very much for sending along Alpha and allowing me to share with all the viewers. And also, thank you very much for the clarification and the follow-up comments. Really do appreciate it. Well, earlier in the show, we talked about the uh, Sharp Shaver Lathering Bowl. Well, we have an update from Philip Sharp regarding sharpshaver.com and the availability of Boonda Beard products. Uh, and Philip writes, hey, Mark, just wanted to drop in and give you some good news. You can now grab some awesome Boonda Beard products on sharpshaver.com. We've just launched three new mutton tallow plant oil-based soaps. Uh, go to Hope, go to Hoop. I think it's it's G O E D E H O O P. Go to Hoop, uh, Riser, that's spelled R E I J G E R, and Dramaderis. And for our lovely ladies, we have the afternoon tea in both mutton tallow plant oil based and glycerin based soaps. These products are seriously amazing and I'm pretty sure you'll love them too. So don't wait any longer and go check them out before they're all gone. Let's get your grooming game on point with Boonda Beard. Cheers, Philip Sharp. Philip, thanks so much for the update. There you go, folks. Boonda Beard shaving products now available on sharpshaver.com. Philip, thanks very much for the update. Really do appreciate it. Your Jimmy V Photography sent along this wonderful review of the Yates Titanium Winning Razor. And Jimmy writes, My Yates Titanium finally arrived. I pre-ordered in December, and it arrived in March. There were some posts about it taking so long and looking for firm shipping dates. But I think a lot of people just don't get how tough it is on one- or two-person shops. There is really a huge difference between a one-man shop and a five-man shop in terms of production and hitting goals. Add in supplier delays and the difficulty in machining titanium, you're left with a production schedule nightmare. But let me say, the razor was worth the wait. For me, 
The ideal metal for a razor is titanium. It weighs in between aluminum and stainless steel. And in a 3.5 inch razor, this is perfect for me. The only exception being the very heavy Phoenix Shaving Copper Dock. And I love the Copper Dock. Starting from the bottom is the shape and knurling of the handle. It's basically just lines going around the handle. No cross hatching or other pattern, but it works. The grip is really grippy in my wet fingers with no slipping or trouble putting the cutting edge exactly where I want it. I'm not sure how such a simple pattern does it so well, but it does. Moving up to the head, we find a design similar to the Henson in that they both guide you to the ideal angle for the razor. But there are several differences. The alignment pins are post on the caps that go completely through the base. I've always preferred posts that go through the base as there is no doubt that the blade is being held properly in place. Plus, the holes are easier to dry out and are easier to clean than closed wells. The top cap has a small radius milled out that gives your fingers a great hold on the cap when tightening or loosening. It also gives you good access to the blade tabs when you're assembling the razor for use. The tabs do not stick out, so there is no danger of nicks or cuts from them. It has full-length lather channels the lather floods out of them, no clogging at all. Here's another cool feature. The screw that attaches the cap to the handle uses a blunt starter thread or Higby. This eliminates the first half thread and was made popular with fire hose fittings. Higby's greatly reduce the chance of cross threading. Moving on from the tech stuff to the most important question, how does it shave? We all know that a shave is the synergy of razor, blade, and soap. Some combinations are a work of art, some not so much. The Yates TI falls squarely in the work of art category. I tested the razor with several blades, Persona Platinum, Bic Chrome Platinum, Voscod, and Permasharp. Every test cycle started with two days growth, followed by a shave the following day on a much lighter beard. I found that some razor and blade combos do a really great job on a couple of days growth, but don't do as good a job on a single day stubble. I don't have the heaviest of beards, but what's there is tough and ornery. All the blade combinations resulted in these results. When you put a blade in the TI winning, you create a beard squeegee. I tested with Phoenix Shaving, Ginger's Garden, Hoffman's, and Bunda Beard. No matter what soap I used, the Yates beard squeegee did its thing. By the second pass, I could call it done. But I love the whole paint on the lather and shave it off process, so I always do a four-pass ice water shave. You certainly won't need to do that, but I'm having fun. Shaving is my zen garden, so I like to stay in it as long as possible. Don't let my calling it a squeegee lead you to think it's super aggressive. It's not. The Yates is a tad more aggressive than my titanium Henson medium. I think it's like a 3.5 on my console. It's hard to compare as the blade feel is so different. While there is a lot of audio feedback, there isn't a lot of blade feel. You know there's a blade, but when you are dialed into the angle, there is no bite of the blade. You can put away your styptic pencil with this razor. Running the icy cold Allen block over my face gives me that Allen block feel, but no zings or stings. Wrapping up, I have to say, this American small business razor was totally worth the wait. I can see why Yates brand is so well loved and there is always a waiting list. Wow, Jimmy, thanks very much for a fabulous, fabulous review. I have one of the original uh, Yates winning razors in stainless steel. 
It was uh, high polished by Charles Smith, who sold it to me. Thank you again, Charles. I love that razor. It's absolutely fantastic. And I understand the squeegee effect that you're talking about. Yeah, it really is very, very unique to the Yates winning razor. So there you go, folks. If you're considering a titanium razor, give the Yates winning titanium razor a look. Thanks again, Jimmy. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. Viewer Nicholas Marion sent along this email, and the subject heading reads, Avon Wild Country American Eagle Pipe. Uh, and he writes here, as you read in the subject field, this is an interesting email. I went to my local Goodwill and found another score, but this one can be yours if you are interested. I know you like the Avon Wild Country, and when I picked this up, you came immediately to mind. Maybe you have one already, who knows? No cracks and little scratches on the gold plastic accent on the cap that is also the mouthpiece of the pipe. Very interesting, and it smells like the cologne that used to be in this old, unique bottle. Uh, he offered to send it along to the channel. He took some photos. I said, absolutely. We, we previewed this in last week's second cup, if you happen to be listening. Here it is, folks. This is absolutely beautiful. Nicholas, thank you very, very much. It is a vintage Avon Wild Country Aftershave bottle. How about that? It even says Wild Country on the bottom. <laughs> How about that? Isn't that fantastic? And it's in the shape of a pipe. It has an amber-colored glass to it, gold cap and accents. And yeah, the pipe stem unscrews like this, and that's where you pour out the aftershave. How about that? Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. Now, we talked about these vintage Avon aftershave bottles uh, on previous Monday Morning Mailbag uh, because Ken Surfs uh, had talked about them on his channel. And we also linked to that video where he was saying you can get some great deals on vintage Avon aftershave bottles. And Nicholas, thank you so very, very much for thinking about me and the channel here because this is absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to fill this up with uh, Wild Country, absolutely. And you know, <laughs> I went ahead and I ordered some new Wild Country because I was getting low. I ordered uh, three bottles right here. And you know, folks, uh, I don't know if the deal is still available, but I went up there to order uh, three bottles of the uh, Avon Wild Country. Here it is right here. These are new bottles because I have one bottle left and I wanted to get some more and I wanted to put some in this absolutely beautiful vintage aftershave uh, cologne container. And I got some uh, brand new uh, Wild Country from, from Avon. And uh, when you spend, I think it was $25 or more, they threw in uh, Mesmerize uh, cologne uh, right here. And uh, this is what it looks like right here. And uh, this is a nice scent too. Though so this was free. Uh, with uh, the purchase of, I think, $25 or $30 or more, something like that. So they threw this in, and, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> absolutely. This is a nice scent, too. This is really, really, yeah, this is nice. I sampled this before cameras rolled. Very, very nice scent. So, yeah, a nice deal up on Avon, avon.com. So get it there, and a really nice price on Avon Wild Country. Just a little over $10, I think. Almost $11, I think $10.49 for a flow for a four fluid ounce bottle. But we're going to be taking this and putting it into this beautiful vintage aftershave bottle. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And the scent is, um, I think the scent, I, I want to say it is wild country, but I'm not entirely sure. But I want to clean it out. And that brought up the question of how best to clean this out. Now, Mark Bagwell, I was telling him about this and he sent links to funnels uh, perfume funnels that can be used to add warm water to this or whatever kind of solution you want to use to clean it out. Now, Nicholas 
uh, also sent this along. I've heard people cleaning bottles with salt and rubbing alcohol. The salt is a very slight abrasive and the alcohol is a solution, but the salt doesn't dissolve in alcohol well. Just pour a little salt in the dry bottle, then add one third of the bottle with rubbing alcohol and shake vigorously. See if this helps. That's a, a really a good idea. There's also a link to an article on Hunker on how to clean perfume bottles. We'll link that below as well because we were exploring that in Second Cup. But yeah, I want to clean this out. I think I might use the salt and rubbing alcohol method. If anyone out there has a, a good way of cleaning out uh, these vintage bottles, please comment below or email me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com. We'll also discuss it on the Monday Morning Mailbag. Uh, but yeah, really, really looking forward to using this in the shave den. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, these are available on eBay. I went up to eBay and there are some really nice uh, pipe aftershave, wild country American Eagle pipe aftershave bottles available on eBay at some nice price points. Now, I always say nice price points and people come back and say, my gosh, you know, they were really expensive. From what I can see right now, they're very, very uh, nicely priced. Let me put it to you that way. So hopefully by the time this runs, they're still available at those nice price points. Uh, but yeah, really, really wonderful, wonderful bottle. My thanks again to uh, Nicholas Marion for very, very kindly thinking of the channel and sending this along. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to fill, I'm going to clean it out uh, and after I hear people's suggestions and use the best routine to clean this out. And then I'm going to fill it up with some wild country. And yeah, I'm going to use it for some reviews. Absolutely. So thanks again to Nicholas Marion. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Avon Wild Country American Eagle Pipe Vintage Aftershave Cologne Bottle. Thanks again, Nicholas. Really, really do appreciate it. Almost forgot. Nicholas also sent along his own Bay Rum Aftershave. Boy, this is great. He put it in a nice plastic spray bottle. This is a really wonderful Bay Rum. Nicholas, I hope you start marketing and selling this because this really is a very, very good Bay Rum. Thanks again, Nicholas. Really do appreciate it. Now here's something really interesting. I received this email from viewer David Richland and the subject heading reads, pH of creams and soaps. And David writes, hi, Mark. Here's something that I found interesting and informative. I know it's lengthy, but I thought it might be useful. The other day, I was wondering about the pH of shaving soaps and creams. So I thought that I would get out my litmus paper and go to work. But before I did that, I went to Mr. Google and did a search on the topic. Turns out that several people already tested for the pH of soaps and creams. Below is a list of the pH of various products that someone had tested. A guy that goes by Belouche on the Badger and Blade website did the list below. It looks like it was done in 2009. Here is a link to that page. Well, we will provide that link to the page below. And uh, if possible, we'll get the list of all those products and do a pinned comment below, if possible. Uh, David continues here. Uh, I did a test of my soaps and creams and came up with similar readings. However, my Cremo came up with a pH of about 6.0. Here is what I found so interesting. A high alkaline pH, that being above 7.0, will open up the hair shaft, allowing the soap and its goodies to get deeper into the hair. This makes the hair weaker and easier to cut and also lets the oils and emollients inside the hair shaft to soften the hair. A low acidic pH, that being below 7.0, will close the hair shaft, making it stronger. But regarding the cremo, pH of about 6.0, although a higher pH than hair, about 5.5, it really isn't enough to get it and its goodies deeper into the hair shaft. But water does help with opening up the hair shaft by weakening the hair and being a transport for the cremo. This is stuff I learned in my business doing hair. We like to cut wet hair because it's easier to cut than dry hair 
because it's weaker. Now, uh, just so you know, David Richland's uh, business is Deja Vu Hair Studio, 275 Center Avenue, Suite B, Aptos, California, 95003, just so you know. Um, Now, here's the important part to all of this. A high pH is rough on the skin. Not horrible since it's roughed off shortly after the shave, but it's important to make sure that the skin is brought back to its proper pH after the shave. That's where the aftershave splash comes in. They tend to be a pH of 5 to 6. I tested witch hazel with 14% alcohol, and it came out to be about a pH of 6. I also tested my Thayer's facial toner, which came out to a pH of about 5.5. If you look below, you can see that the alum block is a 5.0. All good. Throw on balm, which will keep the moisture in the skin, and you're golden. Anyway, sorry about the lengthy email, but I just had to share David Richland. David, uh, no, (laughs) absolutely fantastic, fantastic email. Really chock full of a lot of great information. And again, we'll get all those pH uh, ratings uh, in a pinned comment below. Uh, Really, really terrific stuff. A lot of science there. Absolutely fantastic. When I read your email, I absolutely had to include it in uh, the Monday morning mailbag because I know it's going to help a lot of wet shavers out there, especially those that like the science part of the equation. Really fantastic, really, really fantastic email. Very, very informative, as you said in the beginning. And again, folks, check out David's business. It's Deja Vu Hair Studio, 275 Center Avenue, Suite B, Aptos, California, 95003. Aptos is spelled A-P-T-O-S. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So if you're in the area, drop in, say hi to David. David, absolutely fantastic, fantastic email. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, we've been talking about the Cube 2.0, the Tube 2.0. Uh, as far as being a really, really terrific pre-shave soap. Uh, Viewer Gary J.C. sent along a link to a really helpful article on The Sharpologist. And the title of the article is, Get Ready, Five Pre-Shave Soaps That Really Work. We'll link that article below so you can check it out for yourself. Gary, thanks very, very much for passing this along. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artists and soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review in this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.